So we've defined some areas of the page, we've created some styles within those areas, redefining HTML tags and redefining class styles we've created. Now these are relatively simplistic examples. Because this stuff is so complex to grasp, I wanted you to get the hang of it first. But I hope you'll appreciate that by defining areas of the page and descendant styles like this, you can save a lot of time as you move forward, especially if you ever redesign your website. Let's just create a couple more styles that take advantage of padding so that we make sure you understand some of these concepts. So if we scroll up here to the top, you notice this is a little tight here, the space around this image. And down here at the bottom, that's a little tight here, the space around these links. Now I could define a header and a footer and set the space for each of those. And if you're going to have lots of headers and footers and you want them to be different, you should take the time to define each of those as different regions and then create styles accordingly. But if you just want to add a little space here and there, you can create a style that's just for adding space. So let me come over here again, right click anywhere or click on the new styles rule. I'm going to create a class style called Space 10. And this is just going to be for the purpose of adding a little bit of padding to certain places on the page, when I just want a little more space somewhere. So if I click OK, now I'm going to choose Box, and I'm going to set the padding to have 10 pixels all the way around it. Now I'm purposely choosing padding because I'm going to apply this style to a table cell. Now here's a little tip. Margin and padding, when you apply them to something like an image, don't make much difference unless you have a border. So padding is on the inside, margin is on the outside. And if you have a border around an image, you saw in the last lesson, the padding would be between the image and the border. The margin would be between the border and the other things around it. So when I created an image style with a border, I wanted to use margin to create space so that the border would be right up against the image and there would be a little space between the image and the text. But now I'm creating a padding style that I'm going to apply to a table cell. And the only way that's going to work is using padding because I need to have that little bit of space inside the table cell for the padding to apply. You'll see in a second how this will work. So I set 10 pixels of padding all the way around, click OK. Now I can apply that 10 pixels of space anywhere I want on the page. And what I'd like to do is to give a little more breathing room to these links at the bottom of the page by applying that 10 pixels of space. Now I need to do that by applying it to the table data cell. Now this is really important, and again, if you don't know HTML, I know this may look confusing, but the way tables are formatted, you have a table tag around the entire table, and then you have table rows defined with the TR tag, and then inside those rows, you have table data cells. If you try to apply this 10 pixels of space to the table row, nothing will happen. If you choose table row, and you choose that space 10, okay, so space 10 is now applied to table row, but there's no change here. That's not going to work. We need to apply it to the table data cell. And if you do that, it's pretty easy to undo. Just right click on the tag, choose set class none, and it'll go away. Then click in here again. Sometimes the arrow keys can help you make sure you're in the right place. And make sure you select the table data cell. So if you're just trying to put a little padding inside a table, you want to apply that to the table data cell, not the table row. Now if I apply the style space 10, boom, you see I've got that nice 10 pixels of padding around my links.